hanging out with Neil and Theotians. We ran into each other because of the, the podcast, why we do what we do. You listen to an episode, we reached out, we talked. Sounds like you're doing some really, really cool research. And I like to think so. Yeah. But I think I'm biased. I'm biased too. I enjoy it. So um, yeah, disclosure. When we talk about cool stuff like this, cool stuff happens, right? Potentially. Yeah. yeah. We wanted to start with the state. Like where they are kind of, right? Yeah. Can you we're, share some thoughts a, on that? Yeah, I think we're in a big growth period. The mm-hmm. ACB has shown that we've got a lot of demand. We see services and treatments for intellectual and developmental disabilities. And I think we've got a lot of room for growth. Uh, APPA put some documents together to show what areas that we're hitting, and health and fitness seems to be one of the lowest ends of kind of what we're meeting. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people saying that a- APA, uh, EAD, and service provision delivery arms can do a lot more in terms of meeting a lot of other needs. Yeah. And so one of the missions out there is like finding a market for our devices, products, and our ABA technology mm-hmm. and servicing people. I think regardless of whether it's got the stamp of ABA on it, because a lot of consumers don't want to know the final details. Yeah, they, they want their problem solved, right? Yeah. Their, their pain point filled, right. whatever that is. Right. I mean, as parents, at the end of the day, um, the reason why, I, mean, I think Sid said it very well, data is fickle. I mean, mm-hmm. meaning that anyone can take your data, repackage it, and do a different, different way, yeah. delivery with it. And so it becomes frustrating for data analysis and full time music therapy used with ADA principles, mm-hmm. uh, but just with that kind of fluff, feel good factor that markets well to that group. Um, so here we are, we've got we've got a great demand area, we've got an online growth of online training programs, so I think it's gonna be a future for precision teaching and learning mm-hmm. and online access and responding. So We've got we've got a really cool phase. Yeah. Uh, controlling the quality insurance, making sure that BCAs come out right and they're learning about the history of data analysis. I think that involves learning about CAB, yeah. about the history of how the principles of learning came about. Yeah. Like knowing that errorless learning is part, part of the pigeon experiment. So yeah. That's important. So you mentioned that we're not even tapping into the possibilities of uh, schedules of enforcement. Yeah. I remember reading in the reading books from the, the mid 70s, they were talking yeah. just about schedules of reinforcement. I would totally agree. Yeah. Like, there's so much low hanging fruit out there for practitioners to pick up and go out and make some sort of impact. Yeah. So, let's zoom in on the example that you presented on today. Yeah. Let's use that as kind of a case example. Mm-hmm. So, what was the need that you saw? Why did you go for boxing, just blend of boxing? Uh, measuring off of behavior analysis. Yeah. We kind of well, boxing because I was interested. In it. it wasn't really like a reason that you'd say, "Hey, I chose boxing because boxing's a great cardio workout. Yeah. It's a great, uh, you know, okay. great for endurance. Yeah. It's great for muscles. It's, it's an important first step to being able to. It's, it's great for people that you know might not be able to use their legs for kickboxing yeah. or do running. I, I was gonna say it's, it's a also lot. a great first step for you because it's something that you're. Interested, right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. I, I like boxing when I was a kid. I liked, you know, I did some boxing gym. I, yeah. you know, I was interested in it because I had an interest. In it. Yeah. Like I, that was a passion. Uh, I didn't. So when, when we we, moved, we made a punching bag, we made a punching bag with some engineers. Mm-hmm. I had uh, the three undergraduate engineers: it was Derek Fish, Ryan Bowman, and Alexander McLean. They 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 helped build the device for eight hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, it was affected two accelerometers at the top and the bottom. It was tethered to the ground so it didn't spin, so there was integrity to the data collecting. And these were Texas mm-hmm. and a cutoff threshold of about six hundred twenty-five foot three feet per meter. Where if any movement was above that, it didn't take any of the oscillations that were back and forth. Yeah. And it had pretty good integrity for the measure for eight fifty eight hundred fifty dollars a paper okay. in Dr. Wing Fuqua's lab at Western Michigan, it's a okay. behavioral medicine lab, and yes. it always gets us to think about how do we build in our our technology into the technology of the yep. future. Yep. Um, so this was a kind of a thought exercise of this and a way to bring uh, kind of the marketplace into decision making of ABA as a choice of a, of a, of a workout. So yeah. the bag measured the force of the punch and the number of punches every five seconds and it altered the music in a conjugate preparation. Which conjugates are super cool. So you go ahead and use the uh, Lindsay in 1857 yes. is what you had yes. over, right? Yes. That's it, yeah. Uh, the idea is that the proportion of the reinforcers delivered, um, or the reinforcers delivered in proportion to the magnitude of the response. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. So right? 
basically, it's a proportional change in the the reinforcing stimuli yep. based on the Yeah. And so if I kind of hit, I get something. If I hit harder, I get more. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. And they've been dubbed uh, the most fundamental schedule. They're very intuitive. They can be uh, programmed in with minimal instruction. Okay. So people don't necessarily need to be told. It's very intuitive, right? Because when you go out in the real world, you throw a ball with a small force, the ball goes your foot, foot. Yep. And if you're riding a bike and you yep. ride fast, you might get more wind resistance. And if that's something you enjoy, yeah. you know, that's, that make, you might make me ride a lot faster than yeah. get there. Yeah. So I think when we focus on the EAB world, yeah. we have to look at it with how does this have functional meaning Patients and as the bear, you know, bear walking as you how we bring us back to ABA. Yeah. And it requires, you know, some level of understanding the ecosystem mm-hmm. outside of the control system. Mm-hmm. And looking at what people are doing in the real world, you know, I, I teach about the math. I think it's a great example uh, of mathematical modeling, right? So there's a couple issues with the matching one. Um, one, it has to be using the same program. Yeah. You can't do multiple behaviors at the same time. Mm-hmm. Which I eat a banana and drive a car all the time. I think probably, but I do. Yeah. Uh, Ron Van Alten is probably pretty annoyed at me in terms of the traffic safety. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Banana eating driver. Yeah, oh. that's the real world, right? Right, yeah. So, and then the other issue, you need to have a change here. Because what ends up happening is you're able to switch and alternate immediately after. And that's mm-hmm. an issue that people have when they do programs and then reinforce the behavior straight after someone's quit switching from aggressive behavior. You yeah. get the Jekyll and yeah. Hyde situation. Yep, yeah. and yeah. That's, I was referencing earlier, there was like yeah. 1970s books that were talking about that. And one of those uh, books was just on change over the yeah. like so 200 know. pages on change over the right? Oh, yes. And like what they learned from it. Yeah. People, people do present, like it's, there are things that are getting funded in the grant world, and there are angles that need to be yeah. presented. And I think the BCDAs of the future, they need to know like, what is the application of this. Like, mm-hmm. I need to know about what I need to take from this in terms of setting up my DRI and the intervals of my DRI as they relate to problem behavior mm-hmm. so that I'm getting a more reinforcing sort of um, like, removal of a reinforcer from engaging in other Yeah. So I think, there's, I think there's, you can take parts of it out that are useful, that change your decision making because of the, the, you know, the mathematical modeling, it's yeah. cool. But then, because we are such dynamic individuals, reinforcers are not the same, another critique of the matching model is that it's never just colors. It's never just the mathematical model. It's very hard to predict. There's a lot of yeah. variables going on. How do we integrate interlocking variables and the ones that operate in concert? And that, I think, the art in the science, uh, that's the play grayer where researchers are still figuring out. Yeah. Um, so conjugate preparations, I think, are a neat way uh, they can be applied to each other. And so we, we, we look to people, they will people to box or work out with music. And so if people are choosing to use music, it's embedded within the music. Yeah. And so can we change the course? Can we change the volume? Can we change the pitch? And we can move mm-hmm. those dimensions to elements of the work. I call them three Fs. Force, frequency, and form. Cool. And form is really the accuracy, posture perhaps, force is really the intensity, and frequency is related to speed. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you put all those together, one form is related to safety, force and, and frequency are related to the intensity or calorific expenditure of energy, which is pretty important if you're working out to meet some kind of predestined objective. Uh, we also plugged in heart rate because we knew that heart rate was kind of important variable yeah, yeah, yeah. because if someone's really, really fit, yeah. they might need a heart rate measure as their variable to see that they're in the zone. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so we can try to plug that in and say, hey, we'll, we can mess around music, we can give conjugate preparations or set a goal that's individualized rather than based on one person. Which is how a lot of those apps are. Yeah, right? yeah. pre-classified levels yeah. of fitness, yeah. which I think we know there's a lot of power in the baseline. Yep. It's a great liner as well. There's a lot of power on the baseline. That's a that's a shirt. Yeah. yeah. Power on the baseline. <laughs> um, Otherwise, what, what are you selling? You know, you're selling smoke and mirrors, right? Yeah. If you exactly. can't prove that you did something. Yeah. I'll leave, you know, even if the parents aren't yet convinced that they have a problem, then you're not. You haven't really delivered it. Mm-hmm. You know, because they, they might say it would have gone away otherwise. Unless you can bring yeah. an ADAB to check into it and yeah. say, hey, look. That might be not be the right assumption. Yeah. Um, we might not be able to protect ourselves in a world filled with practices that are emerging, mm-hmm. copycatting some of the principles mm-hmm. and 
than selling it in a repackaged format that's a bit more warm and fuzzy. Yeah. So uh, unless we can figure out how to be warm and fuzzy, I, yeah. think we, I think we do in therapy sessions, a lot of people do, do a really great job of it. Terms might not be the case, and ADA has some stigma that mm -hmm. we have to face. And yeah. That's a history we have to be aware of. It's like a variable that we have to be aware of. Absolutely agree. If I tell you about the story about where it started, in 2008, I went to the US and said, hey, let's make this punching bag product, you know, let's make, it, let's make this device. And they're like, well, we need a separate. Fast forward, kept the idea alive, 2012, pitched the idea at West Michigan University, got some funds, made a prototype, started a patent pending, worked with some individuals like uh, Wayne Kinkway, mm -hmm. Dale Burgers, OBM, and tried to figure out the business side of things. Yeah. And then we got 50,000. Uh, got a grant, got some money. No big deal. Yeah. It was lucky. I mean, like, um, yeah. you know, like, I think. Was they going to pitch competitions and stuff like that? No, that was actually just the. So like, just writing a 50 page paper of the yeah. to what all the funds would be used for. At Western mm -hmm. Michigan, it's a great university. Yeah. Funds aren't as forthcoming yes. at some, some locations. So, 15,000 was a big deal. Yes. Like, over at UC, that amount of 50,000 was the same yes. for us, just okay. because the, the endowment of the university. Yeah. So then, fast forward to University of Cincinnati, where I'm teaching at now, I'm yeah. teaching an online program there, and I'm with some great colleagues, we're yeah. really cool right. school psychology professors over there, really good clip. Yeah. Um, so, right there, we, we have a lot of funds going on with the neural marketplace, and they've changed their system. Okay. They're no longer saying, hey, I'm going to take a 50% cut of your patent or your royalties. They're saying, bring me an idea that you think is going to the marketplace, yes. and we're going to fund it. We're going to take a very, very small amount. Okay. But what we're doing is by taking that small amount, we're opening the door not to just faculty members, yeah. not to just students, to people in the community. So you can come up with, hey, I've got this idea. I think it's going to make you money, me money. But That's still smart on integrating the, uh, the college and the university yep. setting into the community. Uh, yep. so There's a program like that similar at, in Reno where I'm based, but it's not as open as you're describing. Yes. Yeah. Well, jealous. They, 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 they had a event where they said, this is the new front door to yeah. the university. And um, I went to some workshops, I got some entrepreneurial experience, and you know, the, the real money is in that mentorship from someone that's mm -hmm. gone into a company, exited at the right point, and now just does it as a hobby to tell someone, like, hey, this is really easy. Yeah. You, know, you can do this, mm -hmm. you just need to follow these guidelines because I've done this and I know how to do this. So, yeah. All right, so if you made it this far, I have to apologize for the audio quality. We're in a public setting, that's how these things go. So. Neil gives an example of a behavioral technology, this idea of process and your tools and your gadgets coming together. It is really awesome. He sent me a bunch of links, including the patent, if you want to check it down below. These are ways that you can pursue behavior analysis, not only to solve some sort of market need, but create an entire new, potentially, you know, market, industry, job, company, etc., for yourself and others. So I encourage you to check it out and contact him if you have any more questions. I will see you tomorrow with a piece that is shorter, quick, and kind of in the same vein. And then Tuesday, the impending crisis on adults and intellectual disability services. I think one of the impending crises we've got right now is that these kids are getting great services, they're getting fantastic services, and they're getting a lot of services. Mm -hmm. That's your daily update.